68 degrees, Sunday 69, but then we start the work week next week, lots of sunshine and more mid-70 degree temperatures. Sylvia, Lena, back to you guys. All right, Rich, thank you. We are going to go back now to West Carson and uh, Harvard UCLA Medical Center for a news conference uh, by uh, medical professionals there on the shooting today. I'm the chief medical officer at Harvard UCLA. Uh, today we had uh, two patients uh, brought in from that uh, Gardena school shooting, and uh, right now we're uh, taking care of them upstairs in the hospital. One patient has gone to surgery, and one patient uh, did not have to go to surgery, but both patients are now uh, in the hospital, one in the ICU, and one uh, in another uh, part of the hospital, not in the ICU. Yeah, but, uh, but, yes. Sir. Sure. The the uh, both patients. What well, there was a 15 year old boy and a 15 year old girl involved in this incident today, and uh, is in fair condition now, and he uh, has not had to have any surgical procedures done. Uh, he will be watched uh, this evening uh, closely, and uh, he seems to be resting comfortably. Uh, a 15 year old girl uh, was shot in the head. Uh, she received a wound in the head that did not appear to penetrate the skull, we're glad to say. Uh, you're going to hear a little more about that from Dr. Ausman, our attending neurosurgeon, in just a second. She remains in critical condition, however, and her family is uh, uh, on the way up to see her. Uh, the family of the, of the boy has already been with him uh, most of the afternoon. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. James Ausman, who is our attending neurosurgeon today, and he's going to talk a little bit more about the uh, patient. Dr. Ausman? Thank you, Gail. It looks like she um, suffered a um, uh, injury, a wound that went on the left side of her head had exited also on the left side of her head, had caused a skull fracture, and what we call is some bruising or contusion of the underlying brain on the left side. Uh, that led to a, a fairly significant blood clot on the left side of her brain. Uh, she was taken to surgery within uh, less than 30 minutes of the time she arrived here. The blood clot was removed uh, very quickly. Uh, the bone is, was left out because after uh, there is an injury to the brain, the brain swells usually within 48 hours, and this provides room for the brain to expand. Uh, so I think that's the status as I can tell you right now. We did a CAT scan. After surgery, all the uh, hematoma is gone, and everything at this point, at least radiologically, looks good. What's the well, we're going to be looking for her to first improve neurologically or to, to be moving her arms and legs. And uh, this is uh, is a proximal process, and we'll probably have a much better information to tell you tomorrow. Was she ever conscious after she was shot? Uh, when she arrived here, Scott Bricker with trauma surgery. Oh, still over here? Uh, it's Dr. Scott Bricker, who's one of our attending trauma surgeons. Bricker with trauma yeah, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, Bricker, B-R-I-C-K-E-R. So uh, I saw her when she first arrived. She was not conscious. She uh, uh, was uh, already had significant signs of traumatic brain injury. And is she still in her right now, or is she I refer that over to the neurosurgeons. They've uh, taken her to the operating room, and she's subsequently gone to the ICU, so they could probably comment on that better. Doctor, you said the bullet didn't penetrate the skull. What do you mean? What type of a brain injury would that cause? Well, uh, th as you know, when a bullet uh, traverses uh, any kind of tissue, it has energy. So luckily it did not go through the skull. It fractured the skull, but the energy of the bullet caused some pressure waves on the uh, brain, and that causes injury. And that part of the brain, what does that cause? The left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. And, and in most of the people, that's where the speech is located. So we're not able to assess that right now. Okay, is, I'm sorry, is she conscious now? That she's, she, she's just waking up from anesthesia, so we really can't give you more details than that. Uh, Sam, have you been able to signal she's been able to give that her brain is functioning normally? I mean, I know that was a big thing lately with uh, how to give her a and then she's on and went with the 
I think it's better for us to give you an idea tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we can give you a lot of definitive, definitive things. We'd like to see her begin to speak and begin to move her arms and legs. Uh, that's what we look for in her lunch, at least some recovery. Is she breathing on her own? No, at this moment she, is, she still is intubated from surgery. Earlier, I think you said that, that uh, it's unusual to have two people injured by one bullet, but it happens, right? Right. I said that earlier. Can you talk about that? I mean, this person like they came in and fell to hearing this injury is off of one bullet. Yes, well, it, depending on the angle, I guess, of the bullet coming into the body, and if it uh, glances off of the part of the body and then continues to travel on and hits another person, and it sort of prepares to what had happened in this situation. Uh, so uh, one person was hit, and the other traveled on through, and then hit the other person. Is apparently what happened here. Well, so the uh, first range that bullet was. Uh, we can. I couldn't tell that. I think we'll probably need to have the police uh, involved to be able to tell us something like that. Going through the boy's birth and then hitting the girl? It, it appears that might have been what, what happened. Yeah. It lodged in the girl's head? It didn't lodge. Remember, we said it didn't didn't go into the head. It hit the head and then came out. It came into the skull, I should say. It didn't go inside the, the brain. But it, that's right. The, there's lots of energy that can be transmitted from these bullets, as you can imagine. The concussion, the shock waves, is what causes damage. Uh, in the brain or other tissues of the body. So that's one of the, the problems that, with bullets and why they uh, are lethal or something. Sure, so there are 15. What are their names for the We can't give you their names here at this point in time. Okay. Time for two more questions. Dr. Yeah. Can you explain what you get out of the bullet? Hits the skull, shatters it, and then how you describe the people. I don't know how you describe the, the brain and being suffering damage, not from the bullet itself. Well, <laughs> the bullet itself has energy, which is dissipated when it when it hits something. As it goes through the air, it has energy propelling it forward. But when it hits something, that energy is then spread to the surrounding tissues. And, and most likely that's how it fractured the skull, or unless it did it itself. And that transmits shockwaves that Dr. Anderson has told you can damage the brain also. Well, I would say the fact that uh, they're both alive uh, certainly is something that's uh, fortunate. Uh, it could have certainly been uh, worse. Uh, we don't know, of course, what the outcome is going to be on both of them. We have a better idea about the boy than, than the girl right now. But I think the point here that is that the trauma service that we've got here is so amazingly able to respond so quickly. I mean, you have a situation here that happened uh, just before 11 o'clock. Uh, patient got here, the police patients got here within a few minutes, and less than a half an hour, uh, the girl was in the operating room. Uh, with, the, with the accomplished trauma surgeons, uh, neurosurgical uh, team, as well as the accomplished trauma surgery team already having evaluated that person. There's a lot of people that are involved in these trauma centers. It's just not the doctors you see standing here. It's also a bunch of nurses and respiratory therapists and lots of other people that are required, x-ray personnel, to be able to do these things so rapidly to get the patients in there and to maximize the chance of survival. So this is the type of thing that we've got to keep uh, reinforcing in this community because we never know there could be an earthquake next time. But uh, these are the types of things that require this type of hospital to be functional and to have the support that it needs to be able to respond because all of us are potential users of the trauma service. We hope not, of course, but, uh, but if, it, if it does happen, we want to make sure we're able to be able to serve, serve you. How would you describe we don't. There was no. We did, don't have any evidence for any bullet bullet fragments. I think we said that earlier. Okay. How would you describe prognosis for these two at this point? Well, I think one's in critical condition, and we're only going to find out from her as she wakes up. We can't tell that right now. I think from the boy, we got. Uh, he's a lot better shape right now, so it appears that he's going to be better shape. But again, we can't tell until we get more information. So I think we're going to have to come back and uh, let you know later on when they when, when we get more information.
Well, he got shot in the neck, and it doesn't appear that many of the vital structures were, were spared. Apparently, apparently, they were spared. So that's, uh, again, getting back to your question, it's real fortunate in that sense. Of course, it's terrible that anybody gets shot any time, but the fact that he appears to be uh, able to uh, uh, move everything appropriately at this point in time uh, is a great sign and able to converse and things like that. But we'll know more tomorrow. Again, many times you don't know initially when these injuries happen. You have to wait and see what, what how the body responds. So, we'll get some more than a few. No. Okay, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. The doctors who cared for the two students who were shot at Gardena High School just covered a lot of ground there, but just to uh, wrap it up really quickly, the 15-year-old boy is in fair condition, uh, much better shape than the 15-year-old girl who is now in critical condition. She's still intubated from surgery, and they're waiting for her to wake up from, uh, uh, from the anesthesia to, to be able to determine more. But uh, we're learning that as horrible as the situation is, they're very fortunate that they were able to get these really accomplished medical teams to get started working on them uh, very, very quickly.